My name is Anne-Marie Simons and I'm an early stage researcher in the EU project Renaissance and I participate within it since January 2016 before I graduated from the University of Münster in Germany and um, in the Renaissance project I investigate the use of seaweeds as a feedstock for biorefineries. The main objective of the Renaissance project is to produce chemicals out of seaweeds and I do this by performing um, microbial fermentations with anaerobic microorganisms and um, yeah, they use sugars which are prominent in the seaweeds as a substrate. And um, with the data I obtain um, I can measure some yields or productivities and with them um, the design of the biorefinery can be performed. Seaweeds they have several advantages compared to other bio-based feedstocks such as straw or sugar cane. For example, um, they can be grown easily in the sea so that they do not compete for arable land with um, plants that can be used for food. Another advantage can be that um, you can produce high quantities of seaweeds in a short period of time because they have um, very high growth rates and they grow um, up to a very high density. And the last advantage might be that um, seaweeds do not only contain the sugars for fermentations, but also um, proteins or minerals which are of interest for other industries. In the process I perform, I use rhamnose or glucose as a substrate for the microorganism. And that is because in seaweed, these two sugars are most prominent. And um, yeah, Clostridium bearinki, that's the organism I'm working with, he, um, it can produce out of um, the sugars various chemicals which are of interest. For example, you have biobutanol. It has gained much of attention in the recent years because it can be used as a biofuel and it contains um, a higher energy density than um, bioethanol does. And another product is 1,2-propandiol. That is very interesting as it is a high value compound and it is used for different chemical synthesis. The organism can be grown in um, different conditions. You can, for example, grow them on agar plates, but then you have to take care that they are in an anaerobic jar so that no oxygen gets in contact to the organism, because in contrast to us humans, they would die when they see oxygen. You can also grow them um, in, a, in a liquid culture, but um, this bottle is then also sealed with a rubber stopper so that the oxygen cannot enter the flask. The third possibility is to cultivate the organism in a bioreactor, but in, on industrial scale, these bioreactors will contain thousands of liters. Within the bioreactor, the organism grows in a culture medium that contains all required nutrients. In my case, it is rhamnose or glucose. The bioreactor uh, it can be controlled by um, various probes which are entering the bioreactor, and they control, for example, the pH or the temperature. We flux the medium with nitrogen gas to achieve the anoxic conditions because, as I said, the organism would die when it gets in contact to oxygen. We also stir the medium to um, obtain an even distribution of the microorganism, the nutrients and the nitrogen gas. When the fermentation is finished, which is generally after a few days, then we have all the substrate that is converted into products and then we have to get rid of all the unnecessary and unwanted products. And this is done in a process called downstream processing and it is as important as the fermentation itself in a biorefinery concept. By collaborating with other research institutes, as it is done in the Renaissance project, it is ensured that not only one part of the biorefinery is investigated, but the whole process.